Welcome to the world of kinematics. Kinematics is the study of motion. Whether that motion arises from something like a skydiver or the motion of an object through the air, the motion of cars, of planes. There's so many different kinds of motion. There's so many different aspects and things that affect motion. And that all falls under this broad name of kinematics. Now, of course, we're going to start off with thinking about motion and thinking about different things that change and affect motion. But we want to study motion precisely. So how are we going to achieve this precision? We kind of need precision in two different areas. We need mathematical precision. So we are going to quantify motion, to put numbers behind it. And we also need precise vocabulary in order to describe motion and the things that affect motion. So for right now, I want to introduce you to a few terms. So this would fall under the vocabulary part of it. I am going to start with the difference between a scalar and a vector. So a scalar and a vector are names for different quantities that we can have in physics. Basically, a scalar has only a magnitude, meaning how big it is. Whereas a vector has both a magnitude and a direction. So how big something is, but also which direction it is going. So you should be able to see that a vector has, gives us more information about an object because we know both the magnitude and the direction. So what does this mean? What's an example of a scalar or a vector? Well, an example of a scalar is distance. And the symbol we use in physics for distance is just a lowercase d. The vector equivalent of distance would be called position. And position is indicated with also a lowercase d, but with an arrow over top of it. We always write arrows over top of our vectors to indicate that they are vectors, that they have a direction. So the arrow should make you think direction. Things that have a direction are vectors. So an example of a distance would be the distance between Lethbridge, Alberta and Fort McLeod, Alberta. That's roughly 50 kilometers. But the position of Fort McLeod relative to Lethbridge, we would have to say is 50 kilometers to the west. We have to include that direction of west. And I'm going to mention right away that position is very closely related to another vector and that is called displacement. And displacement is shown by this symbol with a a delta D. So this triangle symbol is a delta, it's a Greek letter delta, and that always means change. So change in position means displacement. So actually we can say if you went 50 kilometers west, you were displaced 50 kilometers to the west. It's also a vector, also has a direction. The only difference is position is, does not indicate a change. So Fort McLeod is 50 kilometers to the west of Lethbridge. Whereas if you were in Lethbridge and you went to Fort McLeod, you would say you were displaced 50 kilometers. Let's look at another example of a scalar and a vector. Another scalar would be speed. Speed does not have a direction. If you're traveling 90 kilometers an hour, that does not matter which direction you're going. The vector equivalent we call velocity. Velocity has to include a direction. So you can be going 90 kilometers an hour, but which direction are you going? Maybe you're going north. The symbol for velocity is a V. Actually, you might call it a V, but it's actually a Greek letter nu, lowercase nu, with an arrow over top, of course. So it's kind of like a scripted V. It's actually a Greek letter, but we don't want to get mixed up with any other letters or numbers. So. We also need that arrow over top to indicate that it's a vector. It has to have direction. Speed, we just use a regular V or the Greek letter nu without an arrow. So we still use a V and V makes you think velocity. But if it does not have the arrow, it basically just means speed. Of course, remember S is usually going to mean seconds. So we don't want to write S for speed. Now let's go back for a minute and think about position. I wrote down here 50 kilometers to the west. Well, without knowing the context of Lethbridge and Fort McLeod, if you see something like that, you're going to think, well, west of what? 
And this leads us to the need for a reference. So a reference is basically the point that you're measuring from. So let's imagine that you're halfway in between Fort McLeod and Lethbridge. If you ask where you're located, and I would say 25 kilometers to the east, well again, to the east of what? You're 25 kilometers to the east of Fort McLeod, and you're 25 kilometers to the west of Lethbridge. So if Fort McLeod is chosen as your reference point, you are 25 kilometers to the east. Whereas if Lethbridge is chosen as your reference point, you would be 25 kilometers to the west. That's if you're halfway in between those two places. Now, what kind of directions could we use? We, of course, have north, south, east, west. Uh, if you imagine this plane over here, we might be using directions of up and down. A lot of times those kind of directions are going to be very necessary. However, I mentioned before that we like to quantify things mathematically. We like to be able to use also the direction in our math equations. And for that, we're going to like to be able to put directions into plus or minus, positive or negative. To do this, in your problems, it will be important to define. To define what's positive, what's negative. So, for example, we could say, let north be positive. And that means if you have a positive number in your equation, it means north. That means a negative number automatically means south. Often, we assume that up is positive. There's no reason for this. It's just what somebody decided to do. So you have to decide at the beginning of a math problem, of a physics problem, if you're going to use that and then stick with it. But it's good at the beginning of your work to include the definition. Up is going to be positive or north is going to be positive or east is going to be negative or whatever you want to do. So these basics are going to provide the framework for our study of kinematics.